Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel, I post a lot of anti-MLM content. I will link a playlist right here and down below. This is my big anti-MLM playlist. We are approaching a hundred videos on it and I add new videos to it every single week. So if any of that kind of content does sound interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, consider liking this video. All those things really help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. For today's video, I'm bringing you another MLM top fails. These are compilation stuff Style videos where I take photos and videos and reels and TikToks and pretty much any kind of content that people have taken the time to send to me via Google Drive. I go through, I pick the best of the best. That's what makes it into these videos. And we go one by one and we debunk and discuss all of the crazy things that people in MLMs will say, all of the strange behaviors that they engage in. And we talk about how these things kind of play into the culture and community of the network marketing industry as a whole. But before we get into it, I want to give a huge thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Scentbird is a flexible fragrance subscription service that has reimagined the way we discover, shop for, and even experience fragrances. Personally, I consider myself to be a very frugal person and I am extra cautious when it comes to big ticket purchases. I am a serial overthinker when it comes to things like that. And let's be honest with ourselves here, designer fragrances are a big ticket purchase. We're talking hundreds of dollars here and you best believe that if I'm gonna spend that kind of money on a fragrance, I better be absolutely in love with it first. And this is exactly where Scentbird comes in. Scentbird offers a selection of over 600 fragrances to choose from, and you'll get to test drive a new fragrance every month for only $15.95. You heard that right, a 30-day supply of a designer fragrance for only 16 bucks. We're talking Prada, Tom Ford, Gucci, Versace, and if you're like me and you have absolutely no idea where to begin with a new fragrance, they even have a quick and simple quiz on their website to curate some recommendations you're sure to love to get you started. I am starting out with three fragrances. I have Versace Bright Crystal, as well as Malin and Getz Stem and Vetiver. Also, can we talk about this packaging for a second? It is so sleek, so simple, really minimalist, exactly my style. It works just like a tube of lipstick. You twist it to reveal the fragrance and switching out your fragrance is super easy. You just pop it in, pop it out. You are good to go. The packaging alone looks great on your vanity, but it's also super functional and it's great to throw in your purse or to take traveling too. I instantly fell in love with Bright Crystal. It's so light and fresh and a bit fruity, and it's something that I could easily wear every single day. I could practically bathe myself in this. It is so, so nice. And also surprisingly, I really love Vetiver. This is one that I never anticipated I would gravitate towards based on the description, because it's a bit more warm and earthy than I would typically wear, but I'm really happy to have it on hand now, because it'll be perfect for a special occasion or a night out. If you would like to start test driving new fragrances on your own, you can use the code HANNAHA55 at check out. This is going to give you 55% off your first month at Scentbird, making your first month only $7. A month supply of a designer fragrance for seven bucks. It really doesn't get better than that. And thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. So the first video that I have to show you, it has a few parts to it. This is a Monate rep who gets on her story a few different times throughout the day to talk about why she thinks that people who don't support MLMs are stupid, basically. Something clearly struck a nerve with her on this day, and she has a bone to pick with us anti-MLMers. I haven't had to say this in a really long time, but if you hate every single thing that someone does and you keep watching them, you're not even a hater anymore. You're a fan. If you make a living off of, or not even a living, you just waste all your time hating on something that a woman does to provide for her children and you get entertainment out of it or you make content based off of it, you're actually the worst kind of person. Like, if only you spent your time in a positive way, where <laughs> where would you be? But instead, you just can't stop watching. You're such a fan. It's a really sad life to live, I bet. Did you hear that? I am the worst kind of person. Apparently, I'm a hater who loves tearing women down and I live a really sad life. This is news to me. I have a couple of thoughts per usual. The first thought is that I do want to validate how she's feeling. It's clear to me that her words are coming from a place of maybe frustration, of anger, of maybe even feeling defensive. The anti-MLM movement and the content that is created on this topic is extremely 
effective at preventing people from joining an MLM as well as quitting their MLM. And that's extremely threatening to those involved. It's this huge chain reaction, right? People get involved with MLMs because they wanna make some money. Once they join, they realize that the most effective way to make money is to recruit other people. Anti-MLM comes in and makes recruitment more difficult. They don't recruit at the volume they were hoping to, they don't make the money they were hoping to, and then we get videos expressing frustration like this. I get it, I genuinely do. But quite frankly, seeing people speak this way just communicates to me that the anti-MLM movement is doing a good job. Also, she made a comment about if you make a living on this kind of content, or if you just waste away your time doing it, then you're the worst kind of person. And this is something that I do feel like is really important to address. If you have been a viewer of my channel for a long time, you know that this is my full-time job. I do make a living on this kind of content. I am very transparent about that. And I do see her side of being like, oh, you're making money by tearing women down or hating on other women. I don't agree with that statement. I don't think that statement is accurate, but I do see where she's coming from. My anti-MLM content is created through YouTube. So let's just think about the basics of YouTube monetization for a second. I create a video, I post it on the YouTube platform, people click on it, they watch it, and I receive the ad revenue. And that ad revenue provides me with a full-time income, which I am beyond grateful for. I don't take that for granted. But the point I'm trying to make right here in other very blunt words is that views equal dollars. If people didn't care about this kind of content, if they did not click on it and watch it, there would be no money to be made. I mean, think about it. If I was making video after video after video, just spewing nonsense that nobody can connect to, no one can relate with, no one agrees with, no one is perplexed by, no one is learning from, people wouldn't watch it. Like that kind of content would not get engagement. It would not get clicks or views. People wouldn't be coming back time and time again, video after video. So she's kind of taking this dig at anti-MLM creators for making this kind of content and for making money off of it. But it almost kind of feels like the creator is the scapegoat in this situation. It's easy to be upset with the creator, obviously. But what about the thousands and thousands of people that watch these videos every single day that allow that creator to be monetized? Put simply, if people didn't watch anti-MLM videos, then anti-MLM creators wouldn't be able to make money off of it. Last month, my channel got 1.8 million views. 1.8 million. I am floored by that number. And I don't show that to you for like any weird personal bragging rights or anything. I'm showing it to you to prove the point that people care about this content. People are watching it. People are engaged with it. And at the end of the day, that's truly the root of what she's upset about. The real issue at hand is that this content is gaining traction with viewers and that poses serious issues for the network marketing industry. After that little segment of her talking, she then posts this. Hey y'all, little PSA. I'm getting some messages from people asking why I've blocked them from my account or blocked them from stories. So I want to be clear. If your profile is so locked down that I can't easily tell by a glance that you're a human being here for the right reasons, I'll lock myself down from you. You have the right to have as private of an IG account as you want, but be a lurker somewhere else. Unfortunately, I was forced to make the decision to no longer allow burner accounts or anonymous accounts to follow me. I choose to keep my page public, but it doesn't mean everyone has a right to be here. There have been way too many people with harmful intentions. Frankly, it's weird and I don't have to put up with it. Thank you for your understanding. And you know what? I don't disagree, actually. I don't disagree whatsoever with any of that, but I show it to you to give some context as to what she says next. Also, why are y'all watching my stories every single day, but you don't follow me? You literally take the time to type in my name and go watch my stories, but you don't follow me. That is stalking. Like, I am block happy, so don't tempt me with a good time. Like... This is my space. I don't have to let everybody in. In fact, I could probably make it private and do just fine. But some of y'all are weird. Like, I really feel like if you don't like something that someone does and you're consistently watching them every single day, I feel like that should be a diagnosed mental issue. That just seems so weird to me. I, d I just don't understand. Like, for me, if I don't like somebody, like, I don't want anything to do with them. But y'all are watching everything these people are doing. So is it that you actually really do like them and they're jealous of them and you want to be like them? Or is it like a weird mental thing? Let's take a poll. If you really don't like somebody or something, do you follow everything they do? 
just to see what's up or do you just like ignore them completely? Okay, so this is kind of interesting. In regards to searching someone's account and watching all their stories every day, but not following them. Yes, I agree. That's weird behavior. <laughs> like if you want to see everything that somebody's posting, why wouldn't you just follow them? However, on the flip side of that, it's equally as strange to me that she seems to keep tabs on who is watching her stories and making sure that those people also follow her. Because if she's claiming to notice this trend, this means that she is actively spending her time scrolling through her story viewers and clicking on everybody and seeing if they follow her. In my opinion, equally as big of a waste of time, equally as strange. So my question is, why would she care so much? Why does it really matter? I can honestly say right now, I have never not once scrolled through my story viewers and checked to see who was following me and who wasn't because I don't care. Like there's no reason for me to do that. She's almost giving off the impression that she's offended or threatened by the fact that people are looking at her content but not following her. She equates this to quote, stalking and a diagnosed mental issue, which first of all is not appropriate. Second of all, why does she care? She has a public Instagram account with 25,000 followers. Why would she be so bothered about people looking at her stuff but not following her? Why is she micromanaging such a thing? And my best guess is that it probably has something to do with recruitment and the fact that when you're in an MLM, everybody in the social media space is viewed as your potential prospect. And now that I'm kind of thinking this through out loud, it could could be that she's looking through her Instagram story viewers because presumably if somebody's viewing your story day after day after day, they are the ones that are the most engaged with the endless Monate content that you're posting and they may be viewed as the ones that are most likely to join. So maybe she's keeping tabs on her story viewers to look out for potential recruits. And in the process of doing that, she's realizing that a lot of these people aren't actually following her and that's upsetting to her for some reason. Honestly, this doesn't make complete sense to me. I kind of feel like this is a disproportionate reaction to figuring out that a percentage of your story viewers aren't also your followers. But I guess if you're trying to make your living off of recruiting people, then that could be a really annoying roadblock to encounter over and over again. Also, if you ever have a question about what I do, how I do it, how can you do it? Is it a scam? Is it whatever? I will be 150% straight up honest with you. I'll tell you what products I don't like. I'll tell you how much hard work you actually have to put in to be successful. I'm not going to sit here and say it takes one hour a day to be successful and be at the top of the company. So if you ever have anything you want to say or anything you want to ask before you just start going assuming stuff or calling it a scam or saying I'm a scam or whatever it may be, first of all, say it to my kid's face and then say it to mine and then ask me because you better believe whatever you put out there about me on the internet is going to come back on my kids someday. So if you can sleep well with that, then that's fine. That's fine. But people that claim to be Christians that want to go talk in all sorts of shit need some more Jesus. We just gotta bring Jesus into it, right? Lots to unpack here. What I'm assuming happened here to trigger all of these stories is that somebody called Monate a scam or told her they didn't wanna join and now she's got her panties in a bunch. Or that recruitment rates are just down in general, which could be frustrating, that's understandable. I need to address this comment about her kids though. She said that whatever gets put on the internet about her will come back to her kids one day. So if we're gonna talk about her on the internet, we better be able to sleep at night knowing that. I'm not really sure where that comment is coming from, but here's where I remind everybody about fair use laws and about the fact that whatever you personally choose to put on the internet on your public platform is fair use for commentary or criticism. So if there's something that you're saying or doing that you don't want your kids to see or you don't want to come back on them in the future, I suggest you don't post it publicly on the internet. And I'm not saying that just to her, okay? This is a PSA for everybody in general that in this day and age of social media and the internet, please be mindful and intentional about what you choose to share. And if you're fearful about something coming back to haunt you in the future, I suggest you don't post it. This is a reel from an Arbonne rep and it says in quotes, I don't support network marketing. And then her rebuttal to that is supporting network marketing equals supporting your friend's visions, helping people stay home with their kids, additional income for less stress and so much more. And then part of her caption says, tip, please do your research from the source, the people actually doing it.
it, not those that quit or never started to begin with. We'll get to the caption in a second, but let's address this reel first. The little piece here that really caught my attention is when she says supporting network marketing equals supporting your friend's visions. Oftentimes we see people saying, you're supporting my small business, which we know is not accurate. But this is the first time I've seen somebody use the word vision, and I actually completely agree. When you are buying a product from your friend's MLM, all you're doing is supporting their vision, which in my opinion is not a good thing, and here's why. Less than 1% of people in MLMs make any money at all. The vast majority of people spend way more of their own money to remain active, to buy products, to hit ranks, than they will ever make back. We know this, I am a broken record. So knowing that, we know that the chances of being successful are incredibly slim. What you buy into when you join an MLM is an opportunity, a dream, a vision that quite frankly is not going to work out for over 99% of people that buy into it. With that being said, when your friend joins an MLM and they're bright eyed and bushy tailed and they have this false sense of hope that they're gonna make it big and then you buy into that dream by placing an order or signing up under them, all you're doing is supporting their vision of what they hope to accomplish one day. And you're also prolonging their realization that this is not an ethical business model and that it's most likely just gonna be a big waste of time and money for them in the long run. So in my potentially unpopular opinion, the best way to support a loved one in an MLM is to not engage with it. Don't buy from them, don't join their team, love them, be there for them, but do not buy into their business opportunity. It may feel like you're supporting them in that moment by buying a product from them, but it's ultimately just a band-aid on the much larger issue. The more you buy into it, the more they believe they can make it work, and the longer it's gonna take that loved one to come to the realization that this business model actually was designed for most people to fail. And then as far as this caption, it's obviously throwing shade at people like me who have never been in an MLM and who are very vocal about the reasons you still shouldn't join. Please do your research from the source, the people actually doing it, not those that quit or never started to begin with. I just have to laugh at this. Consider the source, remember the motive. If you are doing your research from the source and asking the person in the MLM their opinion on everything, of course they're gonna tell you it's an amazing opportunity. Of course they're gonna talk it up. Of course they're gonna try and convince you to join because who does that benefit? Them. <laughs> on the other hand, people who actively speak out about why you should not join MLMs what do those people have to gain? It does not affect me at all whatsoever if you go and join an MLM. I can present you all the information, I can give you all the sources, I can give you all the numbers, I can do my best to convince you not to join, but at the end of the day, if you still join, I lose nothing. It does not have any impact on me. In fact, if you really think about it, because we already kind of addressed it in this video, anti-MLM content is my full-time job right now, but what am I doing? I'm educating on why these things should not exist and why you should not join them. So truth be told, if I'm doing my job well and I'm educating on why people should not join and in the future if MLMs are not as prevalent as they are today I'm effectively putting myself out of a job so clearly captions like this really strike a nerve with me when people in MLMs are like we are the best credible source because we're the ones who have been involved with it but consider the source of where you're getting your information from and remember the motive behind the information that you are given if the information is coming from somebody in an MLM that's a financial motive to get you to sign up so so they can make more money. If the information is coming from somebody who does not agree with MLMs, the motive is because they don't wanna see you get scammed. The next thing I have to show you is a bit different than the top fails I usually show. This is a text exchange between a viewer of mine. Her name's Meredith. I have her permission to use her name. This is an exchange between Meredith and a savvy rep. So savvy is an activewear MLM, and this is fascinating, and this is something we need to be on the lookout for. When Meredith shared this with me on Google Drive, she put a little description about what this was about. And she said, hello, I saw an ad on Facebook and I knew it was an MLM. I can't find it now, but it was very shady with limited information. I checked out her page and clicked on the link. One of those where they never say the name of the company, but you fill out a form. I did not fill out the form. A couple of weeks later, I got this text. This is a method I'm not familiar with, so I'm sharing with you in case you find it interesting. Not only do they cold message, but they get your phone number without you providing it if you click the link. So one random day, Meredith gets this text. It says, hi, is this Meredith? It's blank about Savvy. Do you prefer a one-on-one -on -one quick phone call with me to explain how this works and answer any questions you might have? Or hop onto our 10 minute guest info Zoom call at 5 p.m. or to text back and forth? I'm so excited to 
chat with you about this. And then she signs her name and gives her Instagram handle. And Meredith is like, hello, can you please confirm how you got this number? And she says, sure, from Facebook. And then she says, I had a post and you clicked on it and it gave me your info, interested in savvy? And then she includes this little video, which I'm sure she filmed at one point and she just uses the same video for everybody she texts, but here's what it says. Hey, I'm and we connected about Savvy. It is a premium athleisure brand. I always say it's like having our own Lululemon. It's brilliant, it's amazing. And at the beginning, it is just clothing and it's a way to monetize your wardrobe. So you're gonna get this link and when someone shops with you, you're gonna earn 20 to 32%. 50, 100, $200 cash bonus when someone goes on a shopping spree, which are really popular. And then what I do the most is build a team and help my team build a team because that's how we create this incredible residual income. Someone's business is attached to yours for the rest of time. And then there's these insane life-changing bonuses like 500, 2000, 5000, 10,000. My next bonus, 25,000, they go up to half a million. So if you wanna hear more about it in detail, you can hop on our guest info call and I'm here for you all the time. We can talk one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you need to help you decide if this is for you. So obviously very generic elevator pitch style video. Here's who I am, here's what I do. And then she also just casually throws in an income claim saying that her next bonus is $25,000, which is against the policies and procedures, not allowed to do that. And Meredith says, thanks for confirming. I hadn't entered any of my info, so I wasn't aware you were able to receive contact information just from me clicking. And then the Savvy rep says, someone much smarter than me set it up. So I don't actually know how it works, except Savvy changed my life, so I love sharing about it. Meredith says, I'm so glad to hear you're doing well. I know Savvy is about nine years old now, so the chance of anyone doing well if joining now is extremely low. Aside from that, the ethics and morals of MLMs don't align with my character. Thank you for reaching out though. Enjoy the rest of your day. And she says, thanks for letting me know. Open arms always. I feel that this is so, so important to share because this is yet another sneaky, sketchy way that MLM reps are trying to desperately prospect people. There was even a story in a previous horror stories video of somebody who mentioned like an MLM rep got my contact info because I clicked on some link. And at the time I was like, that's weird. That doesn't sound right. You must have filled out the form. MLM reps will often have Google forms that you give all your information into. But at the time I was pretty confused. I was really stumped on how that could even be possible. But this text exchange explains a lot. Apparently there are some kind of technological powers out there that give others your contact information just because you clicked on something, which has really scary implications in its own right. But as it pertains to MLMs, this is apparently another recruitment strategy that we need to be on the lookout for. Cold calling, cold messaging has a pretty bad reputation these days. So now MLM reps are kind of forced to get creative and apparently now they're tracking who clicks on their links and they'll be able to text you directly. I hate this so much. It's so sketchy to me. And I'm honestly not sure how she thinks that's gonna be a good strategy. Personally, if somebody sends me a text referring to me by name and it's coming from a number that I don't recognize, it feels almost invasive in a way, kind of like your privacy has been breached. And there's a very good chance that I'm going to be on guard immediately and I'm not gonna be willing to listen to anything you have to say. Maybe this tactic works well for her, but somehow I can't imagine that it does. The next thing I'm gonna show you, this is a reel, but it moved really fast and frantically and the blurring was pretty much impossible. So I just took a screenshot of the reel and here's what it says. Do you have an oil that will improve my sleep, digestion, energy levels, fill in your symptom? Yes. This woman is a doTERRA rep. She is selling essential oils. And obviously the most concerning part of this reel is the fill in your symptom part. <laughs> this unfortunately encapsulates everything I feel to be true about doTERRA, Young Living, essential oil MLM companies, is that they truly believe that oils are the cure for everything and there is nothing they can't fix and there's nothing you can't use them for. Like the product and the health claims are off the charts in a way that we don't always see from other MLM companies with other types of products. And I wanna point out why I believe that this is so prevalent in essential oil MLM specifically. And I think it has a lot to do with the PV requirements. PV stands for personal volume. And in both doTERRA and Young Living, you can achieve your PV requirements by your personal purchases. And it's not super regulated to make sure that some of those PV points are coming from 
actual customers. In some MLM companies, there is a regulation, like a certain percentage of your PV has to come from retail customers versus your own purchases. My understanding of the essential oil MLM specifically is that it's not really regulated and you can quite literally buy your way through the ranks. So in other words, there's a purchase requirement every single month. So you can imagine that over time, these reps have hordes of oils in their homes that they are trying desperately to use up. Even in the background of this picture, you can see her oil wall in the background. Rows and rows of oils that she has been required to purchase to remain active in doTERRA. So naturally, if you have mass amounts of oils in your home, you're gonna have to get creative and think of new ways to use them to convince yourself that it was worth the money you spent. And I kind of feel like that's why they claim that it can cure and fix anything. Additionally, there's this really clean living, naturopathic type culture within these companies that I think attracts a lot of people looking for cleaner or safer alternatives to things like modern medicine or cleaning products or personal care products. And the narrative that circulates within these companies is that with the right concoction of oils, you can use them for just about anything. And I think that that's the angle that a lot of the reps take when they're trying to sell the products, as we can see here. They identify some pain points or some areas that people might be struggling with and then they propose the oils as the solution to that problem. I'm not saying that essential oils can't be beneficial, especially in the aromatherapy department, but I think saying something like, fill in your symptom is really predatory, very problematic, and that's gotta be against some policy somewhere. And we have to remember that she would not be making such a claim if she wasn't trying to sell. The next clip is of an Herbalife rep being super bothered about the fact that her company is being called a fraud. What's up you guys? So I just wanna jump on here real quick and talk about my fraud program. Yeah, you heard right. Cause it's been just 10 years of getting people sick ass results from weight loss, toning, putting on muscle mass, getting healthy. I mean, I've led these people into working out every day. Okay. Eating healthy, drinking water. I, let's just get right into it. Let's talk about this fraud program. All right. So you just start right here with this fraud protein. You can choose two flavor of these fraud formula ones. And then you got your aloe and tea right here. This helps many digestive problems, and this helps boost metabolism and gives you energy and it's an antioxidant. Oh wait, the fraud doesn't end there. See, this is what happens. People get sick ass results, right? And then their friends and their family and people from Facebook and, and Instagram and all these people start asking, yo, what are you doing? You look so good. I noticed you have like, you've changed, you have energy you're just different you're positive and then they want to jump on the products and now guess what my client just became a coach and now guess what she's making supplemental income and then guess what she goes to an event gets her freaking mind blown okay because they don't teach certain things like entrepreneurship right so now all of a sudden this person has dreams and then they go for it and they start getting a bunch of people on these products and then they start making career level income this is the craziest fraud I've ever heard in my life. Right, Mila? What you want, girl? You want aloe? I got you. Come here. She's waiting. Waiting. I need to do better. I need to do better. Jimena, do better. Don't blast these people. Don't make those petty videos. And it's like, I can't help myself. I mean, you have to appreciate her sense of humor, right? But just as we saw earlier with the Mon 8 Hun, this is another example of how the anti-MLM movement is making an impact somehow, some way, and people within the MLMs are starting to take notice of it and be affected by it. And you know what? Let me say this. Let me make one thing very clear. If you take one thing from this video, let it be this. I do not take joy in seeing people in MLMs like this. It does not make me feel happy or fulfilled to see MLM reps displaying behavior that may indicate that they're feeling threatened or that their businesses might be affected or struggling. I would never wish struggle or failure upon anybody. Of course I want these people to make a livable income. Of course I want them to provide for their families and to have time freedom and to have financial freedom and to have that work-life balance. I want everything for them that they want for themselves. I'm rooting them on in that regard. My goal always has and always will be to direct my comments, to direct my criticisms to the companies and the business model, not towards the people involved. And in saying that, 
that I feel like it's my duty to stand up against this predatory business model and to educate on the fact that success is not possible for everybody, for most people. I wanna give a voice to those who have tried and failed at their MLM through no fault of their own. And I always put air quotes around the word failed because these businesses are designed for most people to fail. So if it didn't work out for you, did you really fail? Or did you actually succeed at doing exactly what this business structure was designed for you to do? A person can make it to the top of an MLM. They can make a ton of money, but that doesn't mean that the company is not a fraud, a scam, or unethical. That just means that the scam is working exactly as intended, and you happen to be the one reaping the benefits of that scam at the expense of other people. Oh my gosh, how long has my necklace been off center like that? That is gonna bug me so bad. I am so sorry if you've been staring at that for the past however many minutes. So do I like seeing people be personally affected by their businesses being called a fraud? No, of course not. But do I like having little pieces of evidence to show that there are people out there actively avoiding Herbalife because they think it's a fraud? Yes. <laughs> okay, the background info that you need for this next clip is that this is somebody at the top of Monate in the very top rank, and she's also a photographer. I might start crying, so just stick with me. But um, so yesterday it was like 80 something degrees here in Indy and sunny and beautiful. And I saw in the news that they said it was the first 80 degree day we've had here since October 11th, 2021. So over six months since we've had a beautiful warm day. And that doesn't necessarily mean anything to anybody, but as a former full-time photographer who was hired and booked and successful at sunset shoots. It hit me like a ton of bricks yesterday when I was driving to Ethan's game. I was driving to Ethan's game and it was beautiful and I kept thinking that not that long ago my day would be missing soccer, missing my kids sports and games because I would have to take advantage of the beautiful day and shoot. I can't tell you how many games I missed because we would have so much rain or it'd be cold or windy and I'd have to reschedule shoots. And on beautiful days, I couldn't enjoy it because I had to work because that's what people hired me for. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm so upset. I'm not upset, I'm happy, but I can't believe I'm this emotional. Monate has given me, has given me the ability to enjoy beautiful days again without the pressure of having to take every single sunny day from April to November to work and provide that income for my family. It was a necessity. I missed games, I missed dinners, I missed tuck-ins, I missed, I couldn't even like take my kids to the apple orchard in, in the fall because I have to shoot on those days. So I just wanna say thank you. Thank you to those who have like trusted me in this business, accepted me. Just feeling so grateful today and it really did just hit me hard if you've ever purchased shampoo or conditioner or skincare for me you're the reason I'm able to enjoy the sunshine again um, with my family if you work with me you're the reason and I know that sometimes there are people who doubt the ability to make money from your phone or direct sales or whatever but I'm telling you if you're passionate about it and you're passionate about helping other people and passionate about making a change for your life, things can look way different for you. They can. This isn't to say that I hate shooting. I love shooting. I love everything about it. I still shoot, uh, but I've just chosen to take it in studio as opposed to sunset so that I can be present. And that's really all I've ever wanted as a mom is happy, healthy children and to be present with them. Um, and now because I'm on eight, that's possible. And these are happy tears. <laughs>
Because of Monate, I am able to enjoy the sunshine again. Now look, I am all for recognizing all the wonderful things in your life and expressing gratitude towards those things. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with saying I was experiencing deep appreciation and gratitude for the beautiful sunny day and the fact that I got to watch my child's soccer game. That's great, love that for you. But there's something about crying and getting on your Instagram story and posting something for your 100,000 followers to see that that feels performative and almost disingenuous. Why can't you just feel that gratitude privately? Why do you have to make a spectacle out of it? And the answer is emotional manipulation for the purpose of recruitment. That's all it is. There's usually an ulterior motive to the things that MLM reps will post. And in this case, in my opinion, she's trying to tug on the heartstrings of other parents who have had to miss part of their child's life due to work responsibilities. And of course, I do recognize that is a valid concern. And I completely understand somebody's desire for a more flexible work schedule to be more present for their children, completely get that. But in the context of this Instagram story, it feels like the goal is to emotionally manipulate the viewer into feeling guilty that they let work overtake family time sometimes and that Monate is the solution to that. And additionally, she's giving off the false impression that Monate could provide people with that time and financial freedom. Monate is sinking like the Titanic right now. I have several videos on this topic. I will link all of them below if you want more information on specifically why this company is going down. But mass amounts of people are leaving this company and those people who sit right at the top, like this woman, they're really feeling the impact of the loss of that many teammates. The Monate business opportunity is terrible. People are paid insultingly low amounts. And as with all MLMs and pyramid schemes, the more recruits, the bigger your downline, the more money you make. So what I'm trying to say is that if you did see this story and it did convince you to sign up for Monate, congratulations, you've just been conned. Because the person who's gonna benefit the most from you signing up is her. You most likely will never be able to experience the time and financial freedom that she is claiming she has, but by you joining her team, you are allowed allowing her to have those things. The company is crumbling. These big teams are losing huge portions of their downline and the top uplines are scrambling to do everything they can to get people to replace those teammates. And this to me is very clearly a recruitment strategy. This next photo is actually of the same person, but a different topic. Here she is posting a before and after photo of her skin and she's attributing her results to the Monate skincare line. And it says, my skin has completely changed since adding this line to my life. My esthetician, my Botox nurse, practitioner and my dermatologist all noticed. It's no joke. First of all, the lighting is completely different. That's like progress photo 101, okay? I feel like this could be debunked on that basis alone. But the main thing that I'm trying to focus on for this photo is the fact that she admits to having an esthetician, to getting Botox and to having a dermatologist. Girl, if I had three specialists working on me, my skin would be glowing too. She outright claims that it's the Monate skincare line that she's added into her routine that's given her these results. I'm gonna go ahead and give the three specialists at least a little bit of credit for this one. This reminds me of an example of a photo that I showed in a video one time of a Monate rep posting a picture of her hair and claiming that it's all thanks to Monate, but she very clearly has extensions in. That's like saying, I lost 40 pounds on Beachbody, but you also got weight loss surgery. You see what I'm saying? It's master manipulation is what it is. It's the systematic omission of part of the truth that really grinds my gears. In in this case, it feels like she kind of outed herself and gave us the whole truth accidentally, but it just makes you wonder how far MLM reps are willing to go to stretch the truth to make you believe that their products are the only thing giving them certain results. The next video is of an Arbonne rep who is telling us how cost effective the products are. This should be good. Okay, hi, 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 ladies. So yeah, I was, I was literally thinking about this the other day because as we all know, Groceries are so expensive now. So I thought of it. I went to the grocery store and basically had to like remortgage my house to pick up groceries. And I was like, you know what? I am actually so thankful for the fact that I have like one to two shakes a day to replace meals with. Um, and I'm being really honest with you guys. Like I actually save so much money on groceries by incorporating two shakes a day, one to two shakes a day into my diet. And even the full routine, like I have so many people ask me and being like, well, I'd love to do a morning screenshot and have a fizz and have a shake or two a day, but like, how much is that gonna cost me? So I've actually worked the cost out 
and maximum. So there's different ways that you can use promotions and all this kind of stuff. I'm not going to get into that, but the maximum that it would ever cost you would be like 10 bucks a day. And that's assuming you're doing two shakes a day, your greens, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, I really just had to come on and share that with you guys because it's the honest to God truth. I was literally thinking it the other day and I just posted it to my stories and it's true. It makes things so easy. It makes life so inexpensive. It fuels you with what you need. It's like literally checks off all the boxes. It's like win, 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 win. Anyways. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this delicious shake. One of my clients wrote me this morning and said she tried one scoop of the banana pancake protein and one scoop coffee, and I had not tried it yet, and it is unreal. Also, the limited edition um, banana cake protein. Um, I don't even like banana flavored stuff, and I'm obsessed with it. It actually has like a lot of... Um, maple flavor to it. You're the best, Lindsay. But yeah, if you want information on like how to get set up with a daily routine, <clears throat> sorry, just reach out to me and I can send you a link to a recommended cart. There's no obligation to do anything, but like I am being so honest with, with you when I tell you that I really was thinking the other day after I left the grocery store, how thankful I am because I really do save so much money. Um, by incorporating these nutrition products. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Okay, the thing that I really wanna highlight here is the fact that this woman, who as far as I could tell has zero qualifications in nutrition, is recommending that you can replace two of your meals each day with Arbonne shakes. I know that she's framing it from a financial perspective and we'll get there, we'll talk about that, but I wanna focus on the nutrition perspective first. According to the nutrition facts of the Arbonne protein powder that she's talking about, the serving size is two scoops, which gives you 160 calories, three grams of fat, 13 grams carbs, and 20 grams of protein. Of course, I am not a nutritionist either, so take what I say with a grain of salt, but I do have some alarm bells going off at the fact that these protein shakes are only 160 calories each, and that she is recommending that you drink two of them a day to replace two of your meals. 160 calories is not meal worthy in my opinion. And I don't know about you, but if I had to replace two meals a day with shakes, so let's say breakfast and lunch, I'm drinking this and I don't eat real food until dinner, I think that would make me feel really crappy. I recognize that there's a substantial amount of protein that might hold you over until the next meal, but I'd be really interested to have a professional weigh in on this. If you are a dietitian, a nutritionist, and you have some insight, I would love for you to leave it in the comments. I'll put the link to these nutrition facts in the description too. I would love to know if you would feel comfortable recommending two of these shakes in place of meals. I can only speak for myself and my body, but I'm fairly confident that I would be feeling pretty woozy, lightheaded, a little bit weak if I regularly consumed nothing but protein powder until dinner. It's of my interpretation and opinion that these are meant to be treated more like snacks or as a protein supplement to kind of fill in the gaps in your diet, not necessarily to be replacing entire meals with. And I think this really does speak to the fact that people who are in MLMs often are not qualified to be given the advice they're giving. They think that once they sign up for an MLM, all of a sudden they're a professional and all of a sudden they're qualified to be recommending supplements to people. And I think that can be really dangerous. But now let's talk about the financial side of it because her reason for having this conversation to begin with is for her to say, groceries are so expensive. Thank God I don't eat. Thank goodness I'm saving money by drinking Arbon protein instead. And let's just focus on the protein powder. So she's saying she she has two shakes a day and that is saving her money on groceries. 30 servings of protein powder, no matter what flavor you get, is $89. Or if you're a preferred customer, it's $71.20. Let's just give the benefit of the doubt here. Let's go with the preferred customer price. So 30 servings is $71.20, but she's having two servings a day, which means that a 30-day supply of Arbonne protein is going to cost you $142.40 or roughly $4.75 a day. I realize that everybody's eating habits, their grocery grocery bills, their food preferences, they're completely different. So I'm just gonna speak from my own personal experience here. I cook breakfast every single morning. It's some variation of eggs, of toast, maybe bacon. If I'm feeling a little crazy, we'll do waffles, French toast, maybe breakfast burritos. I did some rough calculations and for me, only me, to eat breakfast every day, that's gonna cost me somewhere between 55 and $60 a month. 
I also cook dinner every night and I always try and make leftovers. And so I'm eating the leftovers of dinner for lunch multiple days throughout the week. Lunch does not cost me anything extra. I do all the grocery shopping. I spend exactly $0 on lunch related groceries. I make breakfast, I make dinner, I eat leftovers in between. So that means that between breakfast and lunch for me, myself and I, I'm only spending somewhere in the ballpark of $60 a month. She on the other hand is spending $142 a month to have two Arbonne shakes a day to replace her breakfast and lunch. So by my rough calculations, both me and my husband, two people in the household can have healthy, hearty, fulfilling breakfast and lunch for 30 days for the same price that she, just her, can drink two shakes a day from Arbonne. That's not accounting for the meals for everybody else in her household. Please believe me that I know groceries are expensive. I'm not trying to be insensitive to that fact, especially when you're buying groceries for an entire family and every family is different on what they buy and eat. This is just me placing a little seed of doubt that Arbonne is most likely not the most cost-effective route. All I'm saying is that there are more budget-friendly ways to shop and eat, and Arbonne isn't the wonderful grocery bill solution that she's trying to present it to be. This photo was posted by an It Works rep, and it says 100% of the people I help that follow my coaching achieve success are glad they tried something out of their comfort zone. I feel like there needs to be some kind of commas or punctuation in here. Not a very well-crafted sentence, but it's interesting that she is guaranteeing 100% success because according to the It Works policies and procedures, a distributor is prohibited from making income guarantees or false income statements. And a lifestyle income claim typically includes statements or pictures involving large homes, luxury cars, exotic vacations, or other items suggesting or implying wealth. They also consist of references to the achievement of one's dreams, having everything one always wanted, and are phrased in terms of opportunity or possibility or chance. So I don't know, this group of ladies posing on a beach saying that 100% of people achieve success feels pretty against policy to me. I just wanna reiterate over and over again that income claims, product claims, lifestyle claims, these types of posts are against policies and procedures of these companies. They are not allowed to be doing this. And the companies do a terrible job of monitoring, policing, or enforcing these rules. So it's up to us to educate ourselves on what these claims are and that they are against policy and that we should not be taking them seriously. And with that, my friends, that's all I have for you for this video. If you ever come across something on social media that you think would be a good fit for these videos, the instructions for how to send that to me via Google Drive are in the description. I try to make it as easy on you as possible and give you step-by-step -step instructions. And I wanna say thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Remember to check out the link in the description box and use the code HANNAA55 at checkout to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.